It's time to go live. It's time to go live. Good it's morning. Time to go live. <laughs> we it's are time live. to go live. <laughs> good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Saturday to everyone in these YouTube streets. Derek and I want to say a great morning to you all that come in from near and far. Um, those that crawl up out of bed to join us here every Saturday, every Monday, and every Tuesday to talk to you about how you can change the lives of others in your community through housing, through utilizing the ILF model, which is an independent living facility model. Welcome to our Saturday room. I am Shay Forston, your co-host, co-founder of Forston Consultants, and founder and president of the Angela Denise Foundation, which is my nine, my nine. My nonprofit, <laughs> 501c3, um, registered and, and doing amazing things here where I take women from homeless to hopeful in a shared living environment, which I do utilize the ILF model, independent living facility model. So today we are going to talk to you all about the HRA, and that is the housing referral agency, or you can keep it standalone, right? Or you can just be the housing referral agent. Just depends on how big you want to brand it. So today we are ready to have an amazing conversation with you all and talk about how you can take people from homeless to hopeful without owning property, but utilizing your internet connectivity and a phone. Literally, that's all it is. Once you get the information from us, you can go out here and make things happen. So Derek, I'm throwing it to you, sir. Good morning. Good stuff. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Thank y'all so much for being here. We super appreciate it. My name is Derek Forston. I am the owner and operator of Second Chance Housing, and that's my personal independent limit facilities where we take people from homeless to hopeful, right? But I'm also the founder and thought leader where my family and I, um, we go all over the world teaching people this concept of housing the homeless and the displaced right so that's being represented today by forced and consultants as you can see shay's got on her brand new hoodie that she trying to show out with but anyway thank y'all so much for being here as i said i'm the founder and thought leader of forced and consultants where my family and i man we go all over the world showing people this model and god has just blessed us over the years now where now it's not just you having to have a house to house these people god has kind of showed us right because nothing's new under the sun but God has just kind of unveiled to us how we're still able to house the homeless and the displaced, and you never actually need property. So that's the game changer for a lot of people that says, Derek, man, God has put on my heart to house people too. But Derek, I ain't quite figured out how to get that house yet. Well, with the HRA guys, the housing referral agency or agent, um, you don't need a house. You just need relationship. So I think that's very exciting. As you all know, a lot of you guys have been following us, man. We got a lot going on in terms of a lot of rehab. Yeah. Um, we're, we're taking people from homeless to hopeful. Um, we actually bought a property um, to actually house the homeless. A lot of you guys know that, man. We preach that you don't have to own these properties to do what we do when it comes to housing the homeless. But, man, God has blessed us to purchase our first independent living facility in Orlando, it. Florida. So we're super excited about that. Um, Shay and I do own other properties, guys. We own properties, but they're not independent living facilities. Mm -hmm. So when people say, "Well, Derek, what do you do?" Man, me and Shay house people. Period. We're 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 just housing providers. God has just blessed us for the first time to purchase an ILF. Right? Every other ILF that we have, and most people that we teach this to, we go out and rent these places or lease them. But I always tell you all, man, the dream is the one day for you to actually to own that place. And that's exactly where we are now. So all glory be to God. We take absolute no credit for that. On a scale of one to 100, God gets 100, we get zero. Mm -hmm. And I'm just yeah. glad that he allowed Shea and I to be kind of the overseer over it, to be his hands and feet, right? Because God is not going to come on earth, per se, to do this great we're work partners. that we're, we're doing, right? That's God is going to partner yep. with <laughs> us. It's called relationship, right? God is going to partner and covenant with us. Because in the Bible, it says the poor and needy will always be among yeah. us. And we're to take care of the poor, the needy, and the widow. And guys, that's what we're doing. So we're just excited to every Saturday explain it to people. How do you do this if you don't have a house? Derek, this all sounds great. But Derek, what if I can't buy a house? Derek, what if I can't rent one? No problem. We teach people every day now how to start your own housing referral agency. Right? But I do want to give a big shout out to the Castle family. Um, and I hope I'm saying it right because they spelled it with the K. So big shout out to the Castle family. Again, man, it's about 10 of you all that should be on today. Um, I think two members of that family is going to be on Instagram. Everybody else should be on YouTube. 
So big shout out to the Castle family. Um, they're interested and they want to get started. So welcome. Um, this is the first time Shay joining us live. So if you're new to us, we're going to give some instructions to so so that you all get a free gift. But I want to welcome the Castle family and anybody else that's new to us. Also, thank you to all of the older people that just always come around and soak up this information and also share it to other people. But for, for the Castle family, you guys are going to actually get a little bit of a treat because I promised them that I would even go over the ILF a little bit today. So even though we cater every Saturday to the HRA, it's really specific for the Castle family. I'm a breeze by what the ILF is and then I'm a merge it kind of into it. So hopefully that's all right. I actually want you guys to go ahead and type the word new in, in the chat to 407 and actually text this, Te text the word new to 407-326-0086. So again, if you're completely new to us and you've never joined us, text the word new to 407-326-0086. Me and my team will see that immediately. And we also want to make sure that we give you a free gift. And we also just want to say thank you again. Because you could have chose to be anywhere on this Saturday morning, but you guys chose to be here. So first of all, congratulations, because if you're in this room, you probably want to change the lives of people. You probably love God and you probably love real estate. So that's the whole reason why we come here each and every week. Um, mm -hmm. So again, I'm going to just jump straight into it. So again, big shout out to the Castle family. This is specifically for you all. I'm going to spend probably the first seven minutes kind of explaining what is an independent living facility. And how can you house the homeless? If you say, well, Derek, God put on my heart to house people too, Derek. But I can't go and rent no place. Derek, I can't buy one, rent one, or lease one. Well, congratulations to you because today we're going to show you guys how to house the homeless to where the only thing that this requires, guys, is relationship. Meaning you got to know somebody else that already has the house. But really quick, what is an independent living facility, right? For us, that stands for independent living facility and the most important letter and that whole acronym miss glenda big shout out to miss glenda hill over there my auntie my prayer partner good to see you auntie auntie i'm gonna break down to these people today how they can house the homeless and they never need a piece of real estate but in ilf it stands for independent living facility right and this is where we're, we're going to take homeless or displaced adults from homeless to hopeful Yep. Right. And Shay, I'm going to start slowing it down because I know I talk fast. But Shay, this is an environment where they're able to live and thrive without the need for medical staff and or oversight. Right. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is very different from a group home, from an ALF, an assisted living facility. All of those require a license. You must own the property. You got to have nurses and you got to have doctors. That's one thing I'm real good about is telling y'all who I am not. I'm not a nurse. I'm not a doctor and I'm not allowed to administer medications. That's why the ILF model is so powerful because it's basically the opposite of a group home. You don't need a license and the people that we're housing, they're literally independent, Miss Angela, and they don't need my help. And independent means for us, auntie, it means that that guy or that lady that I'm going to house, he can cook his own bologna sandwich. Yeah. He can take his own medications. And he's going to provide his own transportation through either his insurance or the local bus system. So, guys, I'm in the Orlando area, right? And where I live in, it's called the local links bus system. That means every client that's thinking about living in one of my facilities, he or she must understand the bus system unless they have a car. And I'll admit, 98% of the people that we house do not drive. Now, Shay is very different from me. We house a lot of people, but Shay has about four different people in her program who actually have a car and have a job and go to work. I'll admit, most of our clients receive SSI or SSDI. That's a social security income they get that they get every month and they never have to go to a job to get it. Right. But really quickly, a shared living environment for us guys just means that we're going to take a four bed, three bath home. And I'm going to even show you what it looked like because people always say, well, Derek, what do these places look like? Something just like this. God bless us. We just bought this place. This is Shane's new facility for the Angela Denise Foundation. Yep. This is, again, what they look like. Good morning, Tiffany. Good morning, Miss Katara. I'm explaining to people how they can be an agent for change when it comes to housing. But I'm doing about seven minutes for the Castle family. 
who wanted to know a little bit more about what is an ILF and how is it different from a traditional group home. And some people think, Auntie, that this is a big box building with 155 units in it, 155 beds in it. Uh-uh. This is a three-bed, two-bath home where we're able to take people from homeless to hopeful. Big shout out to Mom Good Forster as well. What's going on, Mom Forster? Hey, if y'all can type in to, to the chat. Good morning, Mom Forster. Mom just joined us. Happy Saturday. So, guys, again, this is a three bath, two, three bed, two bath home. And in the model in which we teach, you all know, Janine, that we can take six people from homeless to hopeful. Yeah. Because in the three bed, two bath model for us, Auntie, that allows us to take six people from homeless to hopeful. And guess what, right. Castle family? I don't have to own this place. I didn't have to go and buy this place. Because some of y'all know my story, but y'all, I was a poor social worker just many years ago, not long ago, making $28,000 a year. I said, God, how can I get into this? Because God showed me a lady, y'all, that was making $41,000 a month doing what I'm explaining to y'all today. But she was housing people in rats and roaches. Exactly. Now, I'm going to let Shay jump in here in a minute because Shay going to tell the Castle family how I do this from a nonprofit step, excuse oh, me, yeah. from a yeah. LLC. <laughs> Shay does hers from a nonprofit standpoint. So the person that's thinking right now, man, should can I get a nonprofit or an LLC? That's personal yeah. preference to you. Shay gonna talk to you about how she started the Angela Denise Foundation from a nonprofit standpoint. In fact, Shay, just do it now. Sure. Tell them how you're different from me, Shay, but we right. do the same thing essentially. Yeah. So I completely five hundred one c three nonprofit organization, and I do the exact same thing, utilizing the exact same ILF or in, excuse me, independent living facility model. Um, the thing that makes me a little bit different from Derek is, again, it's it's not my business, right? The ILF for me and all of the other things that I can add into my nonprofit organization, it's more built for the community, right? So I get a lot of com community buy-in. I try to observe my, com my community's needs, and I try to meet those needs. Prime example, we're getting ready to enter into our campaign of giving, which is for food. So we're looking to partner with local restaurants and, and different organizations in our community so we can get together and help other organizations um, that need food provisions, whether it's even having uh, going to a church one day and asking a church for permission to be able to feed meals. Um, you know, as summer's coming up, kids are going to be out of school, being able to partner with other organizations and so forth. So that's the difference of being able to do this from a nonprofit standpoint, because I can add other things into my nonprofit that benefit my community so it's not just solely the housing aspect now another thing that i tell anybody and you can find it right here on our youtube channel is the know before you go nonprofit series that i recorded specifically for people that don't know a lot about nonprofit they hear a lot of information through the grapevine thinking that oh my goodness i can get here and this is an easy win get those grants pay myself hundreds of thousands of dollars and i'm sitting on easy street don't do it. Don't go in there with the mind frame of, of doing that because you will end up. There's a saying that we have live by the grant, die by the grant. Right. Most organizations are unstable when it, when they're only being sourced or funded by grants. Um, Lord forbid you do something to mess up your eligibility with a grant. You're down the hole. Right. Um, you, you can't sustain. So another reason for me going nonprofit or even just not even reason why I went nonprofit, but just giving some more advice on that is this. Your board dictates whether your nonprofit income is sustainable for you as the person that's working or the administrator that's out there doing the day to day can obtain a paid check. And how much that paycheck is. And then there's only a certain percentage that will cover your paycheck from grant. So you've got to be mindful of all of these things. If you're looking at this from a perspective of making a whole ton of money, nonprofit's not the place for you. <laughs> uh, nonprofit is not the place for you, right? This is solely mission driven. Solely mission driven, as is the ILF. The whole model there is, is mission driven. Absolutely. But it's a ministry. Time, it's, yeah, it's a ministry driven. Perfect. And, and but the thing is, you want to make sure that you are um, truly entering into whichever uh, entity type for the right reason. 
because you don't want to go into it as a nonprofit and then be burnt out because you realize that this is just not what I signed up for. This is way too much work. I mean, everybody yep. wants to see your business and that's your finances. Everybody wants to see your minutes and they want to see that you're holding meetings. They want to see that you have a viable board. They want to see all of this stuff. So be mentally prepared. If you're not in, in it for true outreach and to be able to tie things uh, pertaining to outreach with into your organization, I would say no. Go for profit um, and not nonprofit. But there is a caveat to that. There are certain relationships that I will get as a nonprofit organization that Derek will not be able to access right. or exactly. tap into yep. because of my 501c3 yep. status. So those are some of the things that you have to kind of keep in mind. Do your research. Um, see what your community has, what, what organizations, what programs are out there in your community to help you make that decision um, best for your housing program. Derek, back to you. Good stuff. So again, big shout out to the Castle family. And the Castle family is causing you guys to get a lot of information that we would usually go over on, on a Monday. Monday yeah. So again, congratulations to everybody. Because again, every Saturday, because if you just joined us, every Saturday, we always talk about how can you house the homeless, the displaced, or anybody that has a guaranteed income as a housing referral agent, right? Meaning you don't need the property. You only need relationship with people that have the property so that you can refer into them. Mm -hmm. But the Castle family is special today. They have about 10 people that are in their family. They want to do this. And I just wanted to make sure that they understood from the bottom line of it, what is an ILF? But how can you also do both of them? Because a lot of people that can't afford to buy a property, rent one or lease one, you guys can still start the HRA model tomorrow. Yeah. That's how powerful the HRA is. And again, the HRA stands for Housing Referral agency where you can house the homeless and the displaced without the need for property you only need relationship but again the shared living environment and the independent living facility for us again means that we're adults we don't house women and children we don't house girlfriends and boyfriends we don't house the married couple and we don't house the pregnant lady with three kids right i told you god you all god has blessed me and shade where we own other property where we do house women and kids and children and all of that. But in this ILF model, guys, in this shared living environment, for example, for what you're seeing in this picture right now, this is not for women and children. This is for the single adult male or the single adult female. So when you start your ILF uh, castle family, you guys can choose to house military veterans, women that are escaping domestic violence, elderly adults. I'll admit, that's my favorite. I love the elderly adult and I love the military veteran. And just to give you my two cents really fast, because these are usually older people that are already settled in their ways and they're not looking for a bunch of fun. They're not trying to find the next party. They're not trying to find the next drug to try, right? I'm used to housing people now that are just really settled in their ways and all they need from me is a roof over their heads. And again, an independent living facility just simply means that it's not a group home. I'm not administering medications. I'm not feeding these people. And I'm not driving them around in the 18 passenger van. In fact, guys, I'll be in the way if I'm trying to do all of this stuff to the clients that I serve. Because again, the I stands for independent. That means all he need from me is a roof over his head and for me to keep on the lights in the water. Because the Castle family, you may not know this, but we're known as a one-stop shop. So when you guys open your independent living facility you're going to be known as a one-stop shop you can get something that looks like this on the, the screen and get real bougie or guys it can look like this don't get it twisted right here ignore the trash for two seconds because it was trash day but somebody we taught this to they bought this mobile home and it sits on its own land so the person that says well Derek can I do this in a mobile home can I do it in a tiny home can I do it in a two bed one bath yeah. absolutely we take people from homeless to hopeful. And whether you can buy that place or you need to rent it. Guys, this is one of the first ILF that I ever got. And I said, God, you know what? It, it'd be really cool to get this whole cul-de-sac. Most of y'all know my story that I got a whole cul-de-sac of these eight ILFs in one place. But when I got that first one, I said, God, you know what? Boy, it'd be really cool if you give me this whole cul-de-sac. Yeah. And slowly but surely, over time, we took over that whole cul-de-sac. But what, but what did I just tell y'all four minutes ago? I told you that the goal is that you don't always be the renter. Yeah. 
Guys, we are the own land in real estate. Well, we are. Uh, we'll soon be moving moving from the cul-de-sac into our own locations. Absolutely. So we want you guys to be nosy and watch us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, all of that stuff, because we're posting every day the rehab of the house that we just mm -hmm. bought. So now's a great time to tell you, if you're not following us on uh, Forster Consultants on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, definitely do that. If you're on YouTube right now, consider subscribing. We would appreciate it. Yep. And if you're on any other forum where you can only hear us verbally, Come to YouTube so that way you guys can actually see the footage of what we're talking about today. Also, Derek, I want them to follow us on the Angela Denise Foundation as well so they can see what the Angela Denise Foundation is doing with the property because a lot of the, the footage that you're seeing is being used on both platforms, but we want to get some traction for the Angela Denise Absolutely. Foundation as well. Type it in the um, chat as well, Shay, so that they, they, oh, they, 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 they can spell it right and go straight quick. to I'm it. I'm actually put quick links. Perfect. Um, so we're we're just we're really going to be ramping up some things, and if you want to look for a nonprofit organization to partner with, we are looking for partners. It has been made possible. This particular purchase has been made possible by our Angela Denise Foundation partners, both locally and internationally, um, that have stepped in and played a remarkable role in allowing us this, affording us this opportunity to take these women from homeless to hopeful. Um, and, and I'm just excited to get more people on board so that they can not only see us doing um, what we do in the you know nonprofit space, but also seeing how I do this from the the how I do the ILF model from a nonprofit space. So I'll put those in the chat. Good stuff. Good good stuff. So again, for the Castle family or anybody that's listening, because because again, guys, we always tell people, man, if you love God, love people, and love real estate, this is a no brainer. This allows you to be involved in real estate, help people, but ultimately you're still doing God's will. Trust me, y'all. I tell you guys all the time, I'm no pastor, I'm no priest, and I'm no bishop, but we love God. We love people and we love real estate. And in the Bible, it says, not Derek, the Bible says the poor and needed will always be among you. And it also says somewhere in that book that we ought to take care of the poor, the needy, and the widow. Guys, we just so happen to be doing it through real estate, right? So Everybody's going to do it in a little bit of a different way. Some of y'all are going to try to open up a, a, a clothing closet to where you clothe the homeless. Yeah. Some of you guys are handing out sandwiches and you're handing out soups and mm -hmm. graham crackers. So that means you're feeding the homeless. Guys, we're also playing a role in it because we're offering the shelter over their heads. So imagine it like that. I often tell people, imagine having a job or a business to where the blessing of God was already built into it. Lord have mercy. I'm going to say that one more time. Can you guys imagine having a job or a business? Because this is a yeah. business kind of a ministry, right? Can you imagine having a business to where the blessing of God was already built into it? I can imagine some of y'all on your everyday regular job, your bless, like the blessing of God is not built into it. Like you're not doing anything to further the kingdom. Like, and, and that's no knock on anybody, right? Don't get that wrong. But can you imagine Helping the homeless and the displaced, because the Bible said do that. You're clothing them, because if you start one of these, you should also get rid of 14 of those shirts in your closet that you can't fit no more. Okay. Five, five pairs of those pants you can't fit no more, and three pairs of shoes you don't even wear. That's your clothing closet. Now you're taking donations from other people. Yeah. So now when you move in, folks, they don't have a shirt or a belt or a pair of socks. Or a pair of slippers. Mm -hmm. You have it for them already. So again, guys, don't get it twisted. This is a ministry. This is a way for you to help people please God and make enough money to feed your family. That's with everything that I want to do in life, guys. I don't. It doesn't matter. Whatever I do in life, I want to please God. I want to help people. But I also want to make enough money to feed my family. And the first few ways to get started with what we're talking about right now, Castle Family, is that ILF webinar. Right. That's the first step to even get the chance to speak to me on the phone to, to, to have that discovery call. Our ILF webinar can be found at forcedconsultants.com slash webinars. Absolutely free. Yeah. After that webinar, set up a strategy call. Let's see how can we get you started. Until your appointment, I want you to go to YouTube and be nosy about who we are and what we do. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. And all of that stuff. Let's become friends on Facebook. If, if we're not friends right now on Facebook, friend me at Derek Forston. Friend us and follow us at uh, Forston Consultants. And then that next step is just simply taking action. One more time, if you just joined us, 
We're teaching you how to take a house just like what you see on this screen, right? You don't have to buy it. You can rent it. And then you're going to build relationships with social workers and case managers because that's the other question that the Castle family had for me. Derek, where in the world are you getting these people from? Derek, if I go and rent a house tomorrow, Derek, where am I getting the people from? That's the first step to all this. So we teach you how to build relationships with social workers and case managers, and that's your funnel system. So when people say, well, Derek, how do I get the people, social workers, case managers, and social media? Because if you follow me today, you will see every day that we have social media going out, talking about who we are, what we do, and what population we serve. Hey, what's going on, family? Just to let you know really quick, everything that you're listening to right now, I actually have it in a more structured way in a webinar. So when you guys get done here, go to forcedtoconsultants.com, click the tab that says webinars, and there's two webinars there. One is for you to be the actual ILF operator, meaning that I'm bad, guys. Something went wrong with my commercial yeah, just then. And just check your audio inputs because it's coming out and not going. Okay, no worries. I'll come back to that. But again, this is a regular house that you're going to take people from homeless to hopeful and you don't have to buy it. That's usually what surprises everybody when they bump into us and the fact that you don't need a license. And guys, the reason why we don't need a license is because we're not feeding people, we're not providing transportation, and we're not giving out medications. Those are the three things, guys, that will usually get people into trouble when they're trying to do something like this. So again, stay away from those three things, transportation, medication, and feeding people. Those things can get you in trouble, guys, and that's what allows the independent living facility model to work. Shay is giving me a funny look, guys. Give me a number seven in the chat if you guys can hear me. I want to make sure that the audio is coming out correctly. Put a number seven in the chat if you guys can hear me. Just reset the audio. Just make sure your audio sync is, is going. Okay, yeah. I'll check it right now. Yeah. Nope, it is not. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's on the logic. Audio is... Okay, let's see. Audio it's not even coming up as an option, actually. Shut down and shut back on Give us two seconds, y'all, because y'all are not hearing us both from the mics. So they're hearing me from your computer and not from my mic. Okay. So my connection is not there. Still not coming up as a choice. Are you going to plug in? No, you're not. Oh, wow. So this whole town, they wasn't hearing me. Wow. Did anybody say anything? They can hear you, but they can't hear me. I'm showing you from your computer. All right. But I think we're going to be good now, guys. Boom. <laughs> y'all know I'm not techie, so y'all give me a second. Let me make sure my audio is on. Now, can y'all hear me loudly? Not like a distant, yeah, faint memory. <laughs> and I was talking through my computer, not through the actual studio system. So I should probably sound a lot better, and you guys should be able to hear Shay. Let me check the comments. Were you guys even telling me that? No, they were able to hear you, but everything that was coming from my mic, because our because our uh, computers are set literally back to back, so we literally face each other while we're doing So they were still lives, able to hear both of us, but you They were hearing me from your computer. So if you guys can hear me better, let me know. And if you so can actually hear Shay, yep. let me know too. Now, this is what it's supposed to sound like, guys. I'm sorry. Jeez, Louise, I'm hey, firing, y'all. Y'all know I'm not taking, so if y'all want to, y'all can blame Shay, because Shay's supposed to make sure all this is kind of set up before I come on. Y'all know my job is to come on here, sit down, and run no, my big mouth. you know he going to blame me for right? everything. Hey, Miss Rita, you see how she do me? See, Tiffany say that's better. Perfect. So let's jump right back, back, back into it, because the Castle family really is who treated you all today to, to kind of give the brief overall Again, I'm going to pretend that y'all just came into the room, and I'm going to just say this real quickly. We teach people how to start a housing program without the need for a license or owning the property. We call them independent living facilities. Thanks, Miss Tina. Miss Tina, we call these independent living facilities. And Miss Tina, some people think that these are big box buildings with 155 beds in it. 
this is a single family home, just like what you see on right. the screen. And even this mobile home, never mind the trash, because that was trash day. You see that for sale sign? We taught somebody this and they bought this and do this in a mobile home. If you guys saw the inside of that mobile home, your heart would melt. Completely removed. gray floors, painting on the wall, pictures, and yes. they're taking four people from homeless to hopeful that will be sleeping on the street without them. Now, guys, I'll admit, I also have two houses this size. Somebody got a little bougie right here. But this shows you again what kind of homes you can get. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a seven bedroom, five bath home. Yeah. You know how many people I can take from homeless to hopeful in a place like this? Can you imagine what the case manager says when she walks into a place like this and says, wow, Derek. Thank you. You guys are housing homeless people in a house like this? Yes, absolutely. Because if you just discovered us and you're new, you probably don't know my whole story. My whole story is that when I wanted to get into something like this, I used to be a social worker. And I'll admit, to make this story real fast, I took a Saturday just like today, and I went to all the addresses of these so-called group homes or housing programs that I, as the social worker, was referred into five days a week, six days a week from my job. And one day, God put it on my heart. Derek, you should be housing these people. Derek, you need to get in this. Derek, you should be the guy on the other side of the fence. And y'all, I'll be honest. I, I never lie about this. I took a Saturday and I went in for, for myself. I went to address, the address, the address, the address. And everyone that I went to was full of roaches, just disheveledness. And one of them actually had mice or rats, whatever you call them where you live at. Roaches and rats running in and out of the place. And I'll admit, one of the ladies that I begged to show me what this was, Tiffany, Tiffany know this story already, right? That lady showed me she was making $41,000 a month mistreating people in rats and roaches. Castle family, you guys won't do that underneath our tutelage. We're not going to make this kind of money, and we're also not going to be caring for God's people, especially when the money coming in. Why would you treat people like that and you're making this much of money? That lady showed me up in her phone. She said, Derek, I'll never teach you how to do this. But auntie, that lady pulled her phone out. And I'll never forget this, y'all. As I was making $28,000 a year, this lady showed me she was making $41,000 a month. She scrolled her phone. I'll never forget it. It was a Chase Bank app. And she scrolled month for month. And auntie, there was no month where I saw nothing lower than $42,000 a month. Now, take that statement back to the house full of rats and roaches. The mattresses are on the ground. No sheets, no pillows, no comforter. Just the bare mattress on the ground with holes in it, roaches running in and out of the dat gun mattress. Gosh, this broke my heart. So I tell people this was the, the, the stepping stone of what catapulted me to want to get into it. Guys, I always want to help people. I always want to be involved in real estate. God is just so genius, not me. That he allowed us to combine social services and real estate together. So for you guys to think I'm genius, uh-uh, no, I'm not. All we've done essentially is combine social services and real estate together. And Poured it in a blender and brrr, and now my family and I, we pour it all, all and, over the world. And Derek, and the reason for doing so is because we know that most people, well, not most people, anyone, in order to live a successful life, the first thing they, that they say, statistics show that if you have secure housing, everything else falls in place. You've got an address, somewhere that you rest your head at night, that you have safety, security, ability to, to wake up in the morning, get a shower, get ready and prepare yourself to go out there and start the day. That is what helps make people successful. And I'm not even just talking about success in the highway. Like when we talk about success, we're talking about being able to be fruitful. Just being right, you know, in the community, being able to to have access to your daily needs, uh, being able to work, right, go to school, um, dream again, you know, whatever it is. If you're doing, if you're living life out of the back of your car, or if you're living life out of on, on the streets, how can you dream? How can you see yourself in a better place? How can you reacclimate? How can you reposition your thought process? To even prepare to go out and find work or e even be be able to, to, to go out and, and change the trajectory of your own life if you don't have that one stable thing, which is housing. 
So this is why we do what we do. To be able to afford people the opportunity yep. to, to reclaim their livelihood, rec reclaim their, their, their access to community and their community and not being seen as someone beneath everybody else in the community. So that's what we're here for, guys. That's it. And again, the Castle family is asking, well, Derek, how do you get paid if they're homeless? That's a great question. And that's probably great one of question. the top three questions we get all the time. They receive an income by the name of SSI or SSDI. So sometimes even in your city where you live at, the homeless guy that you see in the middle of the street holding that sign that says, I work for food, or the guy that sleeps under the bridge or in the woods. Guys, a lot of times y'all don't know it, but they get an income. Yeah. And it's called FSI or SSDI. That could be due to a mental illness or a physical illness that has not allowed them to get a job. So some lawyer, some doctor, some social worker got together and says, you know what? We going to give him a month of income because he can't work. It's that simple. No different from my military veterans that get, get that SSVF and all that yeah. other stuff. But a lot of those also get the SSI and SSDI. So believe it or not, we get that question all the time. So the homeless guy that you think doesn't have any money, there's a 90% chance that he gets an income every month. And believe it or not, it comes on a debit card. It's called SSI. No, excuse me. Um, It's called Direct Express. Direct Express. That's the name of, uh, uh, of the actual card. And notice how we just give you guys the information. We're not hiding this. We want you to know how to get paid. Like, this is what we yeah. do at Forster Consultants. Like Shay said, it's not rocket science, but you'll hear, you'll hear people use, use that phrase, he get a check. Oh, I get a check. That just simply means he's got a debit card by the name <laughs> of Direct Express, and that Social Security income goes on that card each and every month. And one more time, when people say, what does it look like? Guys, this is another ILF of mine. I don't own this place. That is a rental where we're able to take people from homeless to hopeful, okay? So I, I have a question, Derek. So as an HRA, right? Because I, I just want to, what is the importance of knowing that you have houses? If I'm an HRA, what, what, importance, what importance does it make to me that you've got houses? That you have houses? If I'm the HRA or if you? I'm the HRA. Why is it important for me to know that you have houses? So that you can help me fill these empty beds. Okay. So that's Absolutely. why I want you to tap into yeah. that. Because so, I think a lot of people miss the moment to, yeah. to, to, to connect with people that have houses that are attempting to be HRAs. Right? Absolutely. And then they get into the space feeling defeated, feeling debunked, like this didn't work. Because you've not put the word out that you are a housing referral agency. So give them a little, just, just share on that, the importance. I just want you to hone into that, that relationship there as well. Correct. So as I said in the beginning, this is about bouncing back over to the HRA side, the housing referral agency. It's all about relationship, right? Think of it this way. You don't have real estate, so you need relationship. That's the t-shirt. <laughs> if you don't have real estate, you need relationships. Because if you guys also remember, that's part of what the HRA is. It actually comes with that virtual assistant, yeah. which is like my assistant, Jess. Jess HRA is all day long for me. And she's building relationships with a lot of different people that have the housing already. So like Shay said, if you're trying to be an HRA, you building relationships either by word of mouth and social media. That means letting everybody know that you are a housing provider and you have a network of people with these houses prime example right now everybody should put in the chat where are you located if you are a housing provider meaning you're like tiffany if you're like miss joanne and if you're like miss shay and you already have the property you guys should be dropping in the chat where you're located how many beds available and then if you're hra and if you're in this room how genius is that for you to see where you're to be referred into and by the way, Shay, just in case that they missed it, you could be an HRA anywhere in all 50 states. That's what I was waiting for. Because Shay, the HRA is just telephone and internet access. That's what I was waiting to hear. And Janine White is a great example of that. 100 In fact, I think my assistant told us yesterday that we got a referral from Janine. Janine, li Janine lives in California, guys. Yep. She has a virtual assistant that got with my virtual assistant 
and there may be a possibility of us housing somebody. In other words, her people called your people. Her people called happen. my people. And guys, I'm in Florida. <laughs> so all Janine did was present herself as a housing provider. She's driving phone calls to her business. And because Janine's also a business owner and has a job and a bunch of other things that she's responsible for, she's got a virtual assistant to really make all of this happen for her. That's why today's title is how to start a housing referral agency for displaced adults utilizing a virtual assistant. And the cheat code to that is that these virtual assistants guys started five bucks an hour. Can you guys imagine having some help in your business or your life from somebody that's five dollars an hour and they have a bachelor or a master's degree? That's what these VAs are like. Right. So if you've never heard us talk about VAs, that, that's every usually two, um, every Tuesday. We, we talk about virtual assistance and digital flow solutions as a software system. But the HRA business in the box is literally what makes this happen. Because the housing referral agency, guys, is somebody that acts on the behalf of a person who needs housing. You're like the liaison. And I give the example all the time of that game, monkey in the middle. If you're in the middle, you're the HRA. On your left is the housing provider like Tiffany in Oklahoma who already has the housing. On the other side is the case manager and the social worker that's calling you for the housing. So when you get the call from the case manager, because the HRA, we teach you how to advertise it and to get your phone ringing. That's yeah. the biggest riddle to the whole thing with, with, with the HRA. How do I get this phone to ring for people to look for housing? Once they call you for housing, a part of your brain should say, man, I just got a call from a social worker for housing. I don't have a house. Hmm. The other part of your brain, she said, but boy, Derek taught me how to do this and I don't need a house. I need relationship. Yeah. Let me call Tiffany. Did you guys just hear what I said? That's Janine the, lives in California. Dude, that is the cheat code to the whole process. And I live in Florida. Her virtual assistant done research on hospitals in Florida and Orlando and got a call to come to me. Can somebody Google how many miles away is Orlando, Florida, away from just, say, San Francisco, California? That's a long ways away. But with the Internet and a phone and a virtual assistant, and it happens just like that. But even more importantly, Janine's going to take somebody from homeless to hopeful, and she didn't need the real estate. She only needed a relationship with me. Yeah. And then she's not doing it for free, y'all. I owe now Janine a referral fee if this guy moves in. Mm, mm, mm. And that's what makes this so genius that you can make a referral fee because that's the title, guys. Remember, housing referral agent. Yeah. Jump in, Shay, because I want to make sure that people aren't missing it from me. Sometimes Shay can make it a little softer. Say, am I going too over people's heads or, no. or, or am I making this pretty no. simple? You've made that very simple. Again, like you said, it's all about the relationships. And people say, well, well, how many? I had a person call us the other day and say, well, if you're in that area already, why don't you have the relationship? Because sometimes people get along better with other people. Janine may have found a sweet spot with the with the with the case manager that don't just may not be feeling Shay, right? <laughs> or may not want to deal with Derek. So you got to look at it that way as well. People tend to go to um people kind of connect with other people, personalities. People that person may not be appointed to me in this season, right? Or it may be a new case manager that was that picked up the phone that day that, that Janine called or her VA called. So again, it's having more irons in the fire, which creates more resources for case managers that are working on strict and tight timelines to get residents housed. And that is what we're doing. We're providing case managers with more resources as well as the residents who will, the potential residents, more resources, more access. So by cultivating and nurturing those relationships. Again, you get someone like Janine or her VA that connected with the organization here in Orlando that Derek and I may have other resources or other connections at that particular location. But during her research, she found a new person, right? Somebody that doesn't know us. So now that's Janine's relationship, not mine. 
So yes, I'm going to pay Janine because Janine's done all the work. She got the relationship. She's maintaining the relationship. And guess what? She found a great client. Not only did she just get the phone call, yep. but she did a pre a preliminary call with the client and the case manager before she said, you know what? A little bit of assessment. Yeah. This is, this is right up Derek's alley. Now it'll behoove you as an HRA to do some legwork on your client, on your, on your potential housing providers, know what they want or know what their housing requirements are, know what populations they take. And that can fluctuate and change. So that relationship is not just one that needs to be consistent with the, the case manager, the social worker, or the hospital, uh, or the facility provider. That same co constant communication needs to be with the housing provider. Because guess what? Housing changes. Derek's requirements may change next week. Due to this one resident, this potential resident that Janine brought in the house. Once we bring that page, that, that resident in, it's now Derek and I's job to make sure we're assessing and, and really knowing how that client moves and grooves in the house with the other residents. Because guess what? Those that are in the house now set the trajectory for who comes next. So now Janine, Janine's going to be doing her due diligence. So when she calls back, she might say next couple of weeks, Hey Derek, um, how are things going with my resident? Blah, 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 blah. You know, has, has anything changed in your housing, your housing criteria? Based on housing criteria changes with every bed you fill. <laughs> the, housing, the housing criteria will change with every bed you fill. Right or wrong, Derek? It could. depends on who's the it provider. Really because, because, I mean, I can give a little bit of an opposite. Opposite example of that, if, if I understood that cor correctly, I love the older and the elderly and the military veteran. That criteria really doesn't change a whole lot for me. So if Shay meant it that way, I'll be honest, me as the person that's receiving the client, guys, prime example, I'm going to break this down so easy to you all. And, and I'm going to take the example away from me and give it to Shay. Shay's, Shay has a house right now that she just purchased. That is under right. rehab. Yes. In less than 20 days, that house will be completely done. If you're listening to me right now, you should be thinking, mm, Derek just said I can HRA in all 50 states. I know I live in Georgia right now, but if I do research like Derek is teaching me, especially if I buy the HRA course and I learn how to really do it, yes. and I do the research, I can start referring into Shay's house right now. Yes. That's how fast and how easy this is. Shay has eight beds available right now, possibly even more because she added a bedroom to that same house. It's now a five bed, three bath. If you're listening to me right now and God has put on your heart to house people, I just gave you an opportunity to house people today and you don't have to buy real estate. You don't have to rent it or lease it. Mm -hmm. That's what the HRA is, ladies and gentlemen. Right now, today, I had one of my best guys, and it kind of breaks my heart, but I'm going to give y'all some live footage right now. One of my best guys this morning when rent is due, because if you know anything about what we do, yesterday, today, and tomorrow, rent due. One of my best guys said, Derek, I'm moving out. Crush my soul, because he a good guy, and he was in a private room. But guess who's texting me right now that I can show you? Probably came from Janine, who lives in California. This guy want to come by and see my place. I'm about 98% sure I'm going to take him. I'm actually going to let him come by and see it. And I kind of never do that. And that's on a different teaching. But see how quickly that guy's going to be replaced already? Because my phone rings every day. And if you smart, you're HRA to me. God is going to bless me and Shay to always buy real estate. I just know it. So if you smart. You start researching Orlando and Kissimmee because that's where we buy our houses. And you should be like best friends with my assistant, Jess. Now, let me, I don't answer no phone calls for Second Chance House. I, I did that for a bunch of years. <laughs> but most of the time, you're going to be talking to Jess. I've heard Jess and Angela are like best friends now. I heard y'all talk every they day, Angela. They best friends, Derek. They, they just right? chop it up nowadays. But that's how it's supposed to be. If you're trying to change lives, help people, and make some money. 
That's how this works. Now, I want y'all to do me a favor because I'm answering a few questions because I'm real good at this part, too, and make sure that people understand. Is anybody confused right now about how this model works? Talk to me, Instagram family. Talk to me, Facebook. Type in the chat YouTube. confused if you are confused. If you get it, I need about five y'all to type the word. I get it. Alex, you're supposed to be home in bed. What are you <laughs> doing on Instagram? He came in Instagram. He's an Instagram. Hey, Alex. So, yeah. So, if you're here and you're confused, type in the word confused because I want to make sure that we clear it. But if you get it, I want five people to say, yep, Derek. I get it. This isn't rocket science. Because trust me, y'all, I got a whole nother slide where I'm telling you to start a business. Don't do this in your regular name. To me, that's like, duh. But just to show you how easy it is, my job is to explain it and break it down to remove from your mind to house people. You don't need a house. You need relationship of people that already have the houses. I got right now, I think three beds in Orlando available and i think i got three beds in kasimi all right that's are available yeah. here's some zip codes three two eight zero eight this room is recorded here's another zip code three four seven four six you need to google with that zip code mental health hospital social services mm -hmm. affordable housing the salvation army these are the places that you would be kind of, you know, advertising to and also looking for people to get calls from. And because you don't have the real estate, say, sir, no problem. Give me 30 minutes and me and my team will figure it out. Now you get with Jess, my assistant, and you have the possibility to just have housed somebody. Now, trust me, in about 15 more minutes, I'm going to show you all the HRA business in the box. It's a whole course, curriculum, ebook. I give you a free virtual assistant just to make it all work for you. But right now, Shay, I don't see any text that says that they're confused. So that means everybody I gets it. they got it. Lisa's got a question and I love it. Lisa says, Derek, who pays the relocation fee if one wants to relocate? That's going to be between you and the HRA, but I'm going to assume me as the provider, if I'm going to be housing Robert for three months, six months, eight years, that's probably on me. The referral agent, you found the person. How Robert gets there is kind of up to me if I'm going to be the one housing. But Lisa, in a perfect world, I hope Robert can figure that out on his own. Because we've had it that way to where I've paid for it. Guys, I moved the guy as far away from Ohio. That's the furthest to date that somebody referred to me from Ohio to Orlando. His name was actually Derek. D-E-R-R-I-C-K. The same name as me. White guy. One of the best clients I've ever had. From Ohio, he not from uh Dayton. That's where Dornico's from. He was from um I can't even remember. I forget what area, but I do remember it was from Ohio. His name was Derek. That was HR aid to me. Great guy. We was a stepping stone for him. Derek stayed for us for about eight months until he got back on his feet, went back to Ohio. Long story that went into that. It was good. You guys are gonna realize that you guys are gonna become the stepping stone for a lot of people in terms of where they're trying to go. Sometimes they only need you for three months, six months, sometimes for two years. Man, you can come stay with me for three months and that's all you need. Guys, I'm a stepping stone for people. My program is called Second Chance. So no matter where you are in life, by the time you run into me, this is probably your second chance. Okay? And Tom says, yep, Derek, you're a loud talker. He said that earlier. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> so Shay, hop in there. Yeah, um, that that's just it, Derek. I think you pretty much nailed the hammer on the head. Uh, the nail on the head. Jeez, nailed the hammer on the head. So here's that slide where I usually tell people to, okay, turn, this, turn yourself into a business now. Yes, you can mm -hmm. do this tomorrow. But essentially, all of my teaching, your first step is going to be turn yourself into a business. So that means I'm going to remove Janine White and I'm going to start a business by the name of Monarch Solutions. Mm-hmm. I even remember her in business name because she does so ahead. much business with us and other people helping as an HRA. Janine's not calling people, telling me, hello, this is Janine. Uh-uh. Janine don't do that. First of all, Janine ain't doing it anyway. The virtual assistant is doing it for Janine. Most of y'all have met my team and y'all have seen it. I'm going to show y'all that, that later. But Janine gets so much credit. But guess who does all the work for Janine and makes Janine look like the superstar? I tell y'all all the time, man, Shay and I, 
we're pretty great and good people. But boy, we're without this team of ours, and I'll admit, we're without God first and without this team right here, God, she and I are almost useless. Everybody that you see on this screen right now is a part of Forster Consultants, VA 101, Digital Flow Solutions, Angela Denise Foundation, and a bunch of other stuff. On there. Tell Tara, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a spank Tara. Why my picture ain't on there, man? My picture's not on here either. Go back. Oh, at the end? Yeah. I didn't put Shay in there. <laughs> <laughs> also, Shay's newest um, VA, Latrell, oh, who not. runs her nonprofit organization, he's not on here. Shay hired him less than, what, eight days ago? He's new. He's got to be added to this. So, again, we'll talk about this a little, little bit later. But right here, some of y'all know Jess. Jess right now today is the program manager at Second Chance Housing. Watch this, y'all, because I'm going to give somebody the vision of how this works. God and I built Second Chance Housing probably a little bit over seven years ago. Yes. Twelve months ago, I gave this whole program over to Jess. So that means I don't answer the phones anymore. I don't do social media anymore. I do probably 10% of 90% of the assessments. Jess does all of that. Guys, building relationships in the community the way that I used to, I'll admit, I don't do it as much as Jess does now. But guess who sets up all of the appointments that allows me and Shay to show up with coffee and donuts and talk about our program? Just the other day, I told you guys, Jess set up an appointment and I took pictures of it so that I could show y'all of the donuts and the coffee set up by Jess. The appointment to meet with that particular hospital in front of 15 social workers was set up by Jess, ladies and gentlemen. Now it's me and Shay's job to go before them and look great and sound great and promote this housing program that we're always talking about. Yep. But can you imagine somebody doing this for you at $5 an hour? Now watch me explain this because somebody going to get offended. Guys, $5 an hour for us, Tom, is very affordable. $5 an hour for Jess, Jess is almost rich. Because where she live at, the minimum wage is about a dollar to a dollar and 90 cents an hour. And they got to work seven days a week. So when they're running to us, Americans, and they can get $5 an hour and only work Monday through Friday, they just hit the lottery, guys. So that's why the connection with the VAs overseas and the affordability here makes so much sense. So when Jess is talking to social workers and case managers, this is what she's advertising. And it sounds a little bit like this. Good morning, Matt. Speak to the director of social work. My name is Jess, and I represent a program by the name of Second Chance Housing. I would love to know the best date and time that our thought leader, Ms. Shanye Shea Forston, from the Angela Denise Foundation, can come and meet with you and your team to talk about how we can take people from homeless to hopeful and we do that through shared housing. Tuesday at 10 a.m. is good for us. But if that doesn't work for you, let me know. And I'll put it on Mr. Derek and Miss Shay's calendar. Yeah. Guys, how great does that sound? You being advertised coming from somebody else other than yourself. I'll admit, I used to do this all the time myself. Hello, this is Derek with, with my stuttering self. But, but, but now, uh-uh. Jess does all of that for me, and now I just show up. And guess what? Most of these people think Jess live in Orlando. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you're a social worker right now and you're watching this, you probably know it by now, but Jess lives in the Philippines, ladies and gentlemen. Jess lives 9,112 miles away from my doorstep. I've done the math on it. She's a, she lives in a different world, a different country, a different culture, and right now where I live at, it's 11 a.m. And today's Saturday, where Jess lives at is Sunday already. And it's, uh, let me see, it's 12 a.m. just now. They're 13 hours ahead of us, guys. But this is that shared living environment. I don't care if you're an independent living facility operator or if you're an HRA. This is what you're referring people into. I'm going to let Shay tell you guys how important it is to understand that when you take a phone call from a case manager or just from the guy that saw your flyer in Publix. You need to understand this, that this is a shared living environment, which means oh, other people 100%. live here. Or if not, they're going to want this room. Talk about that, Shay. Yeah, you got What's the difference between these two pictures, Shay? Talk so, about it. 
again, this is a pro this could either. Okay. So this picture right here shows the shared living environment, right? So when we talk about our ILF models or the independent living facility models, we have three different, um, three different accommodation types within those, within that one specific housing model, which is the ILF independent living facility model. What you're looking at right now is our shared living environment. So this is our shared uh, accommodation. It can be two people per room. Try not to, we don't have that many houses that have that big of space as this one does for Derek. I'm getting, of course, my computer's doing that funky thing again. I can hear you loud and clear okay. though. No, but my image just went. Anyway, um, but the shared living environment, again, it could be two people per room, three people per room. It just depends on the size of the rooms. So what you're seeing here is our shared accommodation. Um, the three person per room in the, the picture at the, to the far to my left um, is going to show you a room that is huge. At the top of those stairs is another little lanai, like a little seating area, not a lanai, but like a little seating loft type area. And then when you go to the right of that, it's another, it's a full bathroom. So this is its own personal suite. We could have created, you know, a house manager's quarters or something if that was the model that we did. Absolutely. But the importance of telling individuals or let or knowing what type of accommodation models that are provided in these homes are important for you as the HRA, because that's what you'll be able to identify. What are they uh, capable of affording? What can they afford? Is it a shared model or is it? Everybody want that private room, right, Shay? Or would it be the But can they model? afford it, Shay? Exactly. Talk about that. So that's, it's, it's <laughs> expectation. all about the You just took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> it's all about making sure that we set the necessary expectations. People have to know that this is a shared living accommodation. Um, That is what allows us. And here's, I'll give you the verbiage. You know, we do provide a shared living accommodation. This is what affords us the opportunity to provide you with housing at a very economical uh, amount uh, rate um, and include all of your utilities. So where you're only worried about your bed fee. Okay. Um, so it's very, very important to know one, what your housing provider provides in, in accommodation types, and then also to be able to um, inform the potential client of those accommodations. And it's educating them too. It's probably yeah. a better word, educating them because like Shay said, expectation is everything. The same guy I'm talking to right now, as I'm with you guys live, I had to say this expectation that he can't afford a private room, right? In terms of what our private rooms cost and in terms of what he receives in terms of his income, it doesn't match up. He wants this room though. But guys, his income can can afford this room. So sometimes it's like, you know, hey, buddy, um, I know you want this, but what are you going to do about your food, your cigarettes, your coffee, all that stuff that you love? Yeah. And then it's like, man, you know what, Derek, you right. I will go for the shit because that'll leave me money to get that, 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 that. But as soon as they call you, is, is it, hey, Mr. Derek, um, yeah, I want a private room. So can you afford the private room? They start at, they started how much? So again, you're trying to, you will find yourself having to educate people because again, they're going to call for this room. So this is also a great point for the um, Castle family because you guys asked this earlier too. And as an HRA, you guys need, need to know this. In the independent living facility model, there is three different models with, with, with inside the one. Watch this. So the ILF stands for a shared living environment, right? So most people and their income are going to be able to afford what you see in the screen right here. And that's that normal two people per room, right? And I give the example all the time in Orlando, we're somewhere between $680 and $700 per bed. That covers the lights, the water, the cable, the Wi-Fi, the security system. And sometimes we'll talk about it, but when you build relationships, you can set up a food drop off twice a month. Yep. But I got a whole spiel where I say, we do not provide food. We do not provide food all the time. But when you come into the coaching and I can teach you how to get free food dropped off at your house, you look like a savior and a saint at the same time. Right. But for the gist of our coaching, we don't feed these people. We don't drive them around and we don't give out medications. That's what would allow you to refer into something like this without a license. 
Yes, sir. But when you get to this part that says, Derek, I want a private room. Derek, I'm 55 years old. I ain't sharing no room. Because yeah. that's what the call sound like, Mom Forston, from the guy that's a military veteran. He said, Derek, ain't doing that. Derek, I'm 15 years old, bro. You talking about sharing the room? Ain't that ain't that. what I do, Derek. And I'm going to say, no problem, sir. Or actually, he's going to be talking to Jess. Jess with her sweet little voice, it's going to say, sir, no problem. We also have private accommodations and private suites. He's going to say, well, what is that? She's gonna Just going to say, well, a private room, so it means you have your own bed, your own room with no roommate, but you still share the hallway bathroom with everybody else. Some people, there's like, oh, no problem. I can do that, but I ain't sharing a room. But somebody going to say, well, Derek, I'm grown, bro. I'm 63 years old, and Derek, I ain't sharing a room or no bathroom with exactly. you or nobody else. Exactly. Auntie Glonda, he want a private suite, and we also have these. That bathroom you see right there on the right, guess who's the proud owner of that bathroom? The Angela Denise Foundation. That's a real bathroom of the house we just bought. And I'll be honest, that bathroom, y'all didn't need nothing done to it, really. The closet needed something, and Shay is going to have them sand and repaint that, um, yeah, that, vanity. that vanity. But, Auntie, it's already got granite on it, yep. and they're going to put in new light fixtures. That's, That's all that bathroom today. needs. We're going to go hang out over there. Can I get five there. people to give me a thumbs up if you think that's a pretty nice bathroom? Just five of y'all. Somebody give me a thumbs up if that's a beautiful bathroom. Listen, I already, Derek, we got people already fighting over that bathroom just from pictures. And just really quick, why they putting those in the chat? When you say, well, Derek, well, how I promote this? Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, Twitter. We're in every one of these places, guys. And I tell people we're hard to miss. So as an HRA agent, because this is what today is about, how to house homeless adults without property, the housing referral agency model. You need to be on Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok, Instagram, Pinterest, all of that stuff. Miss Rose, this isn't rocket science, Miss Rose. All we're doing is putting the word out every day that we are a housing provider. I dare anybody right now to take your second phone or your tablet, go to Second Chance Housing, at Facebook or Instagram, look at what we're posting. We're literally just letting social workers and case managers know. Prime example, go to Derek Forston on Facebook right now, and you will see me in that rehab saying, hey, case managers, if you're looking for clean, affordable uh, accommodations for your clients, give us a call at Second Chance Housing. This is what we do. In fact, we're having an open house in 20 days, and you're invited. Mom Forston, why do you think the social workers want to come and see this? Because they want first dibs on it. Ooh, exactly. Derek got a new place. Shay got a new place for elderly women. Let me be the first one to get on her waiting list. Listen, ding, we just ding, had ding, to ding. have... Let me just say this. They got another house. And they weren't going to do an open house. I was like, are they crazy? Gotta do an open house. Open house. Show the world what you're doing. Show the community. You have to. Invite case managers. In fact, if you're an ILF Master Blueprint member... You should be coming to your house in Orlando to shoot footage and commercials out of it. Angela, Miss Rita, Ken, Joanne, fly down. Janine, fly down. Tiffany, fly down. You guys can come and shoot commercials in it and talk about Shay's place just like it's yours. Only if you're an ILF Master Blueprint member, though. Ding, ding, ding. You guys can come shoot. Angela, why wouldn't you come and shoot a commercial? Hey, case managers. Social workers, as you see, this place will be done in 20 days, and you got your phone. Social workers, come see me in 20 days and look at the place that you can send your clients to. Give us a call. Guys, that's how you do it. And we're almost done here, guys, believe it or not. This is a 90-minute room. And again, I only got about, I think, 15 more minutes. But my job is, before we go, to make sure everybody understands today that you can house the homeless and the displaced. I'm sorry? You have 20. I have more or less? 20. That was more or less? You said 15. I gave you extra five. So I have more. Okay. So, again, I just want to make sure that I didn't confuse nobody because I know I talk fast and I stutter every now and again. But I just want to make sure that each and every one of you know that today in this room, you have learned how to house the homeless or the displaced or anybody that has a guaranteed job. Guys, I house people that work at Walmart. Sunny's Barbecue, McDonald's, and Burger King. Yep. It's just that my background is so is is uh mental health, 
when it comes to social work. That's why I worked there for nine years, y'all. The guy that's got uh, 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 schizophrenia, bipolar di disorder, schizoaffective disorder, anxiety, depression. That's my real love. I'll be honest with you. Some of my greatest clients is not the guy that's got a guaranteed job. Yeah. It's the schizophrenic and the bipolar guy. Because believe it or not, as long as they're medication compliant, that's a big word that just means they take their meds every day. They're just as normal as you and I. We were we just talking about one of our clients yesterday. Just talking about that. About one. Some of you guys are afraid of the bipolar guy me, or, or the schizophrenic. Not us. I was telling Derek about a resident that we have um, that really just holds my heart. I he and I told Derek, I said, he makes me feel motherly. Um, when I'm in his presence, it's just, it's so, it's honestly, it's a sweet, the sweetest interaction you'll ever have with somebody. But if you were to see him on the street, 99.9% .9 of people will walk in the other direction, will cross the road. But that's I, like, he's the sweetest. He's sweet. And this guy is triple Shay's age. So listen to what she said. Y'all don't sweetest. miss the gym. Oh. He makes Shay feel motherly, but Shay's way younger than him. As soon as so I respectful, house, so nice, but most people are turning their back on him. There, he was jamming his. He he went to the clothing into your clothing closet and got him some skinny jeans. <laughs> I showed up the other day, boy. He had on skinny jeans. That's it. Go ahead with your bad self. He sure did. He said, "Yeah, you like him." <laughs> and, and guys, instead of living on the street or the park bench or behind a dumpster. He's living in something like what, what y'all see on the screen right now. Very neat. He's very neat. Although he may look disheveled at times, he's very neat. Everything's lined up in, in, a, in a clean row. Like all of his items are just neat, neatly compiled. Yep. And loves to. Hey, what's going on, family? I hope you guys are enjoying the content. But just in case if you arrived just a little bit after we started, we're literally discussing the HR8, which stands for Housing Referral Agency. There's a lot of people that want to get into what we do when it comes to housing the homeless, but they're not ready to buy a property or rent or lease one just yet. But with the HR8, it's going to allow you guys to still house the homeless, make an impact in your community, and make an income, and you don't need the property. The HRA is all about relationship. So literally, guys, if I mean, prime example, even me, I have five beds available in Kissimmee and I have four beds available in Orlando right now. You guys can begin to referring clients to me immediately, literally after learning this information. Let's get back to the show. And also make sure that you guys watch the ILF webinar. They both will change your life and it'll show you how you're able to house the homeless and the displaced. And this does not require a license and you do not have to own the property. Most of you all want to house people just like us. You want to do it. But until you're able to buy a house, rent one or lease one or do rental arbitrage, the HRA guys, the housing referral agency model is what's going to allow you to still house the homeless, but you don't need real estate. You only need the relationship. Ms. Shea, back on you. We got some questions. Let's go. So Miss Lisa is in the building and she says, what's the best way to communicate that an assessment has to be completed first? She says, she keep, I keep having throwback on this. What's the best um, way to communicate that to the social worker case manager or the actual person? Right. Miss Lisa, let us know if that's, if you answer that question, is this the social yeah. manager, social manager, social <laughs> worker case manager? Or it's the individual that's looking. And I'll just address both while she's typing it. But okay. but if this is coming for a social worker or a case manager, it's going to be known that that's kind of part of the mm -hmm. deal. Now, some of them may have have you sign a, a release of life. Uh, no, release of information, a release of information, ROI, just to be able to give you that information about this said client. Um, But in terms of the social worker or the case manager, mm -hmm. that should be expected. Right. So I was a social worker for nine years. I never expected to pick up a phone and just refer a client to somebody without that person asking me a thousand questions. Derek, how old is he? Derek, what medications is he taking? Derek, why did he come to your hospital? Derek, is he crazy or a little bit crazy? Derek, is he taking meds? Mm -hmm. Like, and all we had to do was sign that ROI yeah. and the client signed it. And I could tell that guy his whole business, his whole life. Because that's what's going to allow that guy to make a sound decision for himself. I, I want to drop. So a that's gem. a great question. I want to drop a gem today. Y'all don't get these often. I'm just joking. 
But here's a gem, Miss Lisa. When you're having this conversation, the best way to 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 redirect that kickback that you're getting is by saying that our, we pride ourselves in providing safe living environments for the individuals the individuals that we house and the way in which we do so is by doing a complete assessment yep. so that we know how to house this individual or if they would even be a good fit cuz your last thing that you want to do miss lisa and this is what i articulate to my case managers the last thing i want to do is to take a client from you a resident from you and it not work for either one of us the goal is to make sure that we're we're providing them with the access to the housing that they need. And then also, if you're case managing this resident, that you also have a safe place to enter into to provide whatever services or follow-up services that you will be providing. And that's how I that's how I've been able to explain why we do the assessment. Um, never had kickback. I must say that. Like I've never had kickback, but they want to mm -hmm. know. A little bit more of like, oh, well, why, why do you do an assessment? Because yeah. they don't think that they don't realize that the people under forced and consultants get the training to somewhat navigate and, and assess as a case manager or social worker does. We train you in that. Um, our ILF mastery blueprint team, you all will be getting a text message from me today, actually, um, to start taking some courses. There's some courses that we're going to start requiring for everybody to take on an annual basis to keep your information, you know, with mental health and, and how to handle it appropriate, making sure that you have those certi certifi certificates. Blah. And even so, though they're not required, they're going to make you look better and they're going to make you stand out. They'll be out. required for us. Yep. <laughs> yeah. No, right, 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 right. 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 Just in general. Yeah they'll, yeah. Be, yeah. they'll be required for us. But the reason why is because it gives you a better. Um, it helps position you better in this market. So, yep. And the fact that you will have that behind you as well, Miss Lisa, to, to give that information, um, even better. Uh, bye to our Instagram peeps. They also, um, uh, we've been on a little while since I announced this be before. If you're completely new to us, I'm sure you saw it at the bottom, but we want to know. So also let us know by just typing in new, but we got a free gift for you guys right so just like when you guys go to to a new church for the first time and say raise your hand or if you're new i got a free gift we do the same thing so if you guys just would text the word new to 407-326-0086 we have a free gift um that we want to give you all just of our way of saying thank you also if you don't mind if you've enjoyed this information today um consider sharing the room i would love it if about seven people can share the room either to somebody or just share it to your personal page. If you know somebody that always had a heart to help people, if you know people that love real estate and if they love God, this is a no brainer, but usually people that love God, love real estate and love people. We want you to introduce this to them because a lot of people think they have to have a license and they have to have something that's called a group home or an assistant living facility to be able to start your own housing program. But that's just simply not true. So we want to make sure that you all know and we want you all to share it to other people that just what you see on the screen is what you guys can offer other people. And again, the biggest myth is that you have to own the property. Guys, I'll admit, man, when I was a poor social worker making $28,000 a year, when I found out that that lady, because that lady, she showed me one thing, y'all. She wouldn't teach it to me. She wouldn't guide me. But when she says, Derek, I don't own these places. Guys, that was the biggest, like, like eye opener ever. Because even as that poor social worker making 28 grand a year, I can scrape up enough money to go out and rent a place. Yeah. And then with God on my side, he going to make it work. Because I just say, God, I'm doing your will and I'm helping your people. God, you got to make this work. I'm not stealing from nobody. I'm not mistreating nobody. I say, God, you showed me a lady that's making $41,000 a month doing this. And God, she mistreating your people. I said, God, if you let me get in it, first of all, I won't hide it from other people. Y'all, I truly believe that, that most of our blessing for us as a Forston family, I think a lot of our blessing is tied to because we share it. Yeah. Guys, even me as the social worker, nobody wanted to teach me this. I was the honeypot and didn't even know it. 
Well, when I left that job and I became this, oh, nobody wanted to help me now. But guys, I kind of put it back on God and I use faith. Faith without works is dead, right? So I got to go out and rent the house. I scrape that money up. And then I said, God, okay, it's on you now. There is poor and needy and widows out there and God, they need help. And God, a lot of them got the checks. They, they got the money, but because of what they look like, smell like, be, because of their past, somebody won't give them a chance. So I made my program second chance. Mm -hmm. So now everybody, by the time they meet me in my program, I don't care if they screwed up 55 times in life. The day they meet us, oh, this is your second chance now. And when God showed me a lady that was making 41 grand a month mistreating these people, I said, man, this is going to be a no-brainer. I said to myself, if this lady makes $41,000 a month, can you imagine what my life going to be like if I do this the right way and not house people in rats and roaches? Guys, I couldn't wait to get into this. And God bless my brother who passed away this past November. I said, bro, I think I just found what's going to save our life, dog. It's going to please God. It's going to help people. And bro, our community going to respect us the whole while while we doing it. He said, well, what is it? I said, bro, it's, it's kind of like these group homes, but it's not that because it don't require a license. We don't have to buy the place. He was like, well, how you know? I said, bro, I've been on this job for nine years, basically sleeping because now I realize the girl that I've been calling every day to come get these people from my hospital, she doing it. No license, no requirements, no sprinkler system. She don't own the place, no memberships. She just renting rooms to people, bro. But, bro, she doing it in rats and roaches. I said, Otis, can you believe what our life will turn into, bro? We do this the right way. And, and we put some gum sheets on the bed. We give them a pillow, a comforter. Guys, this isn't rocket science. As great as this room looks that's in these pictures, guys, the only thing that's brand new in this room right here is the sheets, the pillow, and the pillowcase, and the comforter. That headboard. That dresser, that came from a hotel that seen what we do on Instagram and wanted to donate to us. Yeah. So, so guys, don't get twisted and think this stuff is all brand new. I went to Ashley Furniture. Uh-uh. Walmart got the best pillows, pillowcases, sheets. But this girl, making a 41 grand a month in rats and roaches, she had the beds on the floor. No bed rails, no sheets, no cover, no pillows. Trash all over the place, rats and roaches running in and out of that place. I said, God, if you let me get in it, I'll teach it to other people and we'll change the way homeless people are being viewed and we'll change the way they live. Hey, what's going on, family? Have you ever imagined starting your own housing program? That's probably why you're here. And if you're looking for one on one coaching, like you're kind of getting right now, but in a more of a one on one setting, just you and I, that's our ILF Mastery Blueprint. There's a number that they're scrolling below on this screen right now. If you text the word scholarship to that phone number, my team is going to get you some information. So first of all, I'm going to say congratulations and thank you for moving at the speed of instruction. We look forward to working with you. And again, this is only for people that desire our one-on-one -on -one coaching, which is designed to watch you succeed from going from a zero to a hero when it comes to information and knowing how to implement this independent living facility model without any mistakes. That's most important. So again, our ILF Mastery Blueprint, guys, there's a scholarship that's available for it that'll slice the price in half, which is also a no-brainer. So again, if you've ever desired to start your own housing program, but you thought you needed a license, you don't. You thought you had to be a nurse, you don't. You thought you had to own the property, you don't. Consider our ILF Mastery Blueprint where we are going to take you to success and let God use you in your community housing the homeless in the displaced. Let's get back to the show. Miss Shay, on you. You got it, sir. So we do have a, I, I do want to respond to this um, from Miss Jones, from Miss Rose. Um, she said, thank you for loving the schizophrenic and the schizophrenics and those with bipolar. When you have mental illness and gets better and it gets better, you can be the sweetest. You can say that again. Um, but she says, but why would the clients tolerate not being fed? Um, oh, so you got it. Don't. Yeah, I got it. Um, so we typically do not feed our clients like we don't have an industrial kitchen, nor do we have a license from a nutritionist to do so. So that is something that we do not implement in the in the independent living facility. That's where we leave the case manager to case manage. Right. The person to help them navigate being independent. Our role, our goal is to be a, a, 
a housing, a secure housing location or secure housing provider for the case manager's client. So the case manager can case manage effectively and not have to go and do so in the woods. Um, when we say we do not feed our clients, it's typically that. Um, I don't have anyone that's in-house as a chef that's cooking three meals a day. Um, that is when you're tipping into that, that skilled facility that's going to require you to have a license. That's going to have, that's going to require you to have a nutritionist on board that approves all your meals. That's going to cause you to have to submit, you know, submit your menus every, every month or every quarter of what you'll be feeding your residents on a daily basis. So that is not something that we do in the independent living <clears throat> facility um, structure. Again, independence. We want our, we want our residents to feel as if they are outside of a skilled facility, learning how to truly navigate on their own. And that includes transport, taking transportation, whether it's public or, you know, if they have a vehicle or being able to maintain that and providing their own meals, being able to cook for themselves, being able to help themselves sustain. So once they leave out of our homes, the goal is that they leave out of our homes into their own space and into their own place so that they are successful in that. Knowing how to cook. Do I have people for the nonprofit organization? I have a chef that comes in and teaches, you know, quick meals, crock pot meals. You know, we do things like that, but it's more educational. It's not from a standpoint of us doing it for them. The goal is that we we show them if they don't know it, you know, their case managers come in and show them. We have a young man who goes to classes three times a week to learn how to be self-sufficient. And that's what he does. Instead of going to school or to work, he goes to his aftercare uh, program, which teaches him how to do those things. So for us to come in and provide those same services that they're being taught at those facilities, it it really why have them teach the, the skill <laughs> if they're not going to be able to implement it? So that's really the reason why. It's not that we don't feed our residents. They don't need us. They, and don't, they don't want us to. Yeah, <laughs> they don't need that's going to be my answer, actually. But my, my thing is most of my clients believe that they're chefs. Right, so yeah. I'm and in the way. And another thing, Derek, is this too. Now, if we have clients that come into us that have nothing, they will never, and mark my words, Miss Rose, they will never go hungry. Whether we've got to deliver pizza, whether we've got to partner with other We're tied to food pantries too. So exactly. Our clients, we in are. fact, we shot a video not even two weeks ago um, showing you guys that all the food they have, right? A lot of our clients know how to hook up to those food pantries. So a lot of our clients get dropped off boxes of food. Yeah. But even to answer your original question, and I say this jokingly, but I'm serious, right? Most of my clients believe that they're chefs. So they love the barbecue and cook and all of that stuff. So even as a part of kind of my reward system, I'll go to walmart.com and I'll order chicken leg quarters and they barbecue, right? So Miss Rose, that's also what makes it very scalable mm -hmm. is that you can grow this so fast to get multiple homes because again, you're not required to cook. Now I know a lot of people that try to do this and they offer breakfast and lunch and all of that stuff. But the kind of clientele of the avatar that we're housing, they don't want me to cook their bologna sandwich. They want to cook their own ham sandwich. They want to prepare their own soup. They don't want that. Because again, in my setting, if we did add food, that'd be an extra cost. We try to keep our housing very affordable. So again, the avatar that we're looking for is the guy or the lady that can take his own medications without the need for a nurse. The guy or the lady that can cook his own bologna sandwich without assistance. And the guy or lady, most important, that can take their own medications without the need for a nurse or a mental health counselor or a doctor. That's what the whole model of an ILF is, yeah. which is completely different from a group home. So people say, well, Derek, what's the difference between you and a group home? Very easy. People in the group home need help. Yeah. People in the ALF need you to feed them, dress them, bathe them, give them medication reminders, give them their medications, make them say, ah, uh, Swallow it. Yep. I don't do that, guys. So when we get a call from a case manager, and this will even answer your question even better. And she says, Derek, I, Derek, I got a great guy. Derek, he's independent. He, he can take his own meds and he can, you know, walk on his own. But Derek, he has no clue how to cook. In that case, I'm going to have some follow-up questions. Does he, it, is he a TV dinner guy? I don't right. want to run his blood pressure through the roof, but does he do TV dinners? Can he eat other things that doesn't require your 
a stove per se, because if he can't, my job is to not put this guy in a bad environment to where he's going to starve. Just like Shay told you, our house has got tons of food. But let's just say my other five guys don't want to cook for him. Right, yeah. This may not be good. But I'll admit, my guys, everybody eat together. Shay's houses are the exact same. When one person cooks, everybody eats. So day one in an ILF, you're like a stranger. Day three, things are warming up. By the time you get to day eight in an ILF, they all become family. So they get introduced from day one as like strangers, but usually within a week, all of our clients are eating together, watching TV together, going to the store together, and they just become family. So that's kind of, again, what makes it beautiful. Michelle, you want to hop back in? No, go ahead. I'm just answering. A, I'm responding to a message. Okay, good stuff. So I'm going to jump over to, to the chat. Let's see if I missed anything. And keep the questions coming, guys. We love questions. We thrive off of questions. Can they cook in your facility? Yes. Absolutely. So I want them to have a stove, a microwave. Shay just gifted my guys yesterday with oh, a, um, a, a, um, a rice mind. cooker. And big shout out to my Auntie Glenda. That my Auntie that. Glenda gave them a, a air fryer. So oh, big, I big shout out. Who fry you? Something. It's a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, so <laughs> they got, so yes. They, they, got a, they Okay, so they got a rice yeah. cooker, an air fryer, and a deep fryer yesterday. And so yesterday was my older brother's birthday. One of the gentlemen that lives in the house is actually a chef. Real talk. Yeah. And he was so happy. So he called my brother. <laughs> Mom forced him to get a kick out of this. He called my brother and told my brother, come over tomorrow, tonight. Which is, yeah, because that was yesterday. Come over tonight and he wants to make him some some fried chicken wings and season them up and sauce them for him. Yep. And my older brother will go and hang out. Like my older brother loves going over there and hanging out with the fellas, even though he's, oh. you know, he doesn't work with us anymore. But he's, um, you know, he just goes and chills. He hangs out with the guys like one of the guys. So and absolutely, Miss Rose, we definitely they get more than enough access absolutely to cook. they can cook. They, they enjoy Rose. Cooking. They cook so much. We have to put a curfew on the kitchen. Yes. So me and I don't want you frying chicken at eleven o'clock oh, at night. They will cook all right. But yeah, them. with this clientele, like like I'm, I'm not sure how new you are to us, Rose. But with this clientele, one thing they're not really going to allow is for them to starve. Like and again, oh, no, be, we'll because we also tie a lot of uh, resources into our our homes. There's like drop offs for grocery and food. Our church is a part of it. So again, our coaching teaches you guys how to make your program a little bit more than kind of how you advertise it. And that's the whole point to it. I advertise that we offer independent living in a shared living environment. We never offer food. I tell that to the case manager and the social worker. So guess what? When food shows up three or four days a week at my ILF, guess what I look like to my community and my social workers and my case managers? Because guess what, Brian? Jacob and Brad gonna go and tell the social worker, Miss Teresa. Derek told me, man, he don't offer us food, but man, you know he dropped off food four days this week. Guys, first of all, I didn't drop off nothing. Right. It's already tied into it by our relationships, so that makes us look bigger and better. Because the case manager gonna say, Derek, Jacob told me that you keep dropping off food, but you told me that you don't. Guess what that's called, y'all? Overpromise? No, 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 no. no. Under promise. Under promise, over deliver, right? So the promise is we do not offer food, but the over deliver, well, Derek got a company or some kind of program or a church dropping off food three or four days a week. Lord have mercy. That's how you become a blessing to your city, your county, right? Your neighborhood even, Yeah. okay? Any other questions, Shay, that I'm missing? I think getting ready to wrap it up here. It. So our, we lost our Instagram peeps. I keep forgetting. They're Instagram elite. falls off after an hour. Only hang out so that's why we tell people that when you join on Instagram, just come on over to YouTube because after an hour, for some reason, they drop off. I didn't make that public service announcement today, so they just lost it. Yeah. No worries. Let, let me check the chat real quick. So for all of you, I will say this. For all of you that enjoyed this conversation today, um, this will be a live stream. You can go back in and, and it stays on our site on, excuse me, stays on YouTube, uh, on, under forced and consultants. So go ahead. And if you haven't already like subscribe, click the notification bell so that every time we go live, you can bring your questions to us so we can answer them live and direct. Um, one day we are going to schedule a all Q and a 
uh, where we will allow you all to ask and we will have some of our other panelists, other housing providers, HRAs on stage live with us from the studio. Um, so it won't just be me and Derek hanging out on stage like we do, you know, um, but we'll have our other ILFs and family members, HRAs come on stage, VAs. We may just do a whole plethora, Derek, where we have everybody join us and we do a Q&A day. Um, where you bring your questions and we'll try our hardest to answer those questions as in, in, in the time frame that we do have, which is the 90 minutes. So be on the lookout for that. Hit the notification bell if you have not followed us or subscribed to our YouTube channel. Make sure you do that too. We're always dropping information as we continue to grow out the ILF independent living facility model um, and the, the association. You'll be hearing a lot of information on that. What are we doing? Where are we going? Be a part of the family, right? Be in a part, be a part of the ILF tribe. Join us and change your community, change the lives of those that need it most, and show them that there are people that do care about their well-being and that we will open our doors to provide them with safe, affordable, clean, and dignified living. Derek, over to you, mm -hmm. sir. Absolutely. So just really quick, but before we close, I got a few more slides because I want to make sure that I hit that HRA just right. So again, guys, um, when, when people say, well, Derek, what am I doing? You're providing housing. So mm -hmm. don't get lost in all of these titles, right? You are a housing provider, period. I don't care what you call yourself. I don't care how you word it. When people ask you what you do starting today, tell them that you are a housing provider, right? Yes, sir. Do yourself a favor and join these Facebook groups, right? Any Facebook groups that have anything to do with case management, social workers, homelessness. And here's a big one. If you guys go on Craigslist or Facebook, there'll be groups that are called We Went Rooms or Rooms for Rent. Guys, as an HRA, this is the kind of person that you want to kind of connect with. If this is a real estate investor that rents rooms to people, why wouldn't you call him and say, hey, sir. I saw your post on Craigslist and I would love to be a partner of yours because my company and I, we get calls each and every day for military veterans, mm -hmm. homeless adults with guaranteed income and people that have jobs but can't afford their own apartment. I would love to connect with you, sir. You keep buying houses and I keep filling them. Mm. Does that make sense, everybody? Yes. Right. So, again, you guys should be looking for real estate investors joining Facebook groups for case managers and social workers. And most people that teach y'all stuff or try to explain stuff never give you practical. I'm going to give the verbiage really quick right here. If I join a Facebook group that says social workers of your city's name, the first post I'm not going to just post and say, hey, I got housing. You introduce yourself and say, thank you for allowing me to be in this group. I look forward to learning from you all. And I look forward to adding value as needed. Your say that next one post. More time. Can you say that one more time? Like Shay, I'm giving it to him, Shay. Because oh, Shay, somebody right. gonna make the um mistake mm -hmm. in your first post. Hey, I got a program by the name of da, 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 da. uh uh. That ain't how you do Facebook groups. Guess how I know that? Because your big brother Derek did it. And got banned. <laughs> Until you learn it, guys. How do you know? That's what. what one thing I always pride myself on, guys. I'm not afraid to try anything, basically. Be with right. You. That's how I usually learn stuff. You got to mess up. And one of my coaches told me to fail, but fail fast. Yes. Because the faster you fail, the quicker you can learn from it. So I learned the first post should be, thank y'all so much for accepting me into this group. Because most of these groups, y'all, they have to accept you. Sometimes it's immediate. Sometimes it's the next day or three days later. Your first post, thank y'all so much for allowing me into this group. I look forward to learning and growing with you all. But I also look forward to adding value where I see fit. Next post, I would probably post on somebody else's post and say, wow, I really like that. Never viewed it from that standpoint. This is really great information. Mm -hmm. But Lord, have mercy. That third post, here I come, y'all. Guys, thank y'all so much for allowing me to be here. I also would like to take this time to introduce my program, Second Chance Housing, where we get tons of calls each and every day from social workers and case managers looking for affordable housing. Right. If you are a real estate investor or if you just buy property and you usually rent to a mom, dad, and three kids, let me show you how to double your income and double your impact in your community. Let's have a call to talk about it. Guys, that's the gym, man. I'm giving y'all all the coaching right now.
But again, these are the groups. Take a screenshot of it. This room is recorded. Join these groups, y'all, and put the word out about who you are. What you do. But don't forget about start a business too, right? Because nobody cares about Mary Washington. But they will respect Washington Solutions, Washington Enterprises, Washington Consultants. Remember, I told you guys, nobody cares about Derek. Derek Forston. Oh, he okay. But guess who they really love? Second Chance Housing. Most of them can't even pronounce Shay's name. Shun, y y y y Shun what? Shun Ye Shay. We just call it Shay, y'all. But guess who they know throughout the whole community? The house women. The Angela Denise Foundation. Okay? And I'm about to close. Angela, I'm getting ready to close, I'm Angela. getting ready to close, It's like that Baptist preacher. I'm getting ready to close, y'all. But somebody said, well, Derek, where, <laughs> where do I serve, Derek? I told you 30 minutes ago, you can serve in all 50 states or you serve where the need is. Yeah. I'm in Orlando and Kissimmee, Florida. Tiffany is in Oklahoma. Katara is in South Carolina. Neonta is in Miami. Guys, if you are HRA, I'm giving y'all the cheat code today because people in this room have ILFs. Remember I told you about relationship? Why nobody put into the chat? Hey, Tiffany, Derek said you're in o Oklahoma. How many beds you got available? You take Tiffany's zip code, go to Google, and type in mental health hospitals, case management, mm -hmm. social work. And guys, all of these places are pop up where you should be calling and introducing yourself to. I'm getting ready to close. <laughs> will you be a local resource or will you be statewide? God, you can say, man, you know what? I'm going to only serve my area. And I'm going to throw in Derek because he in Orlando and Derek just keep buying houses. Yeah. Great. Perfect. I would love your help because I'm trying to find another house right now. I would love your help. Building relationships with ILF operators, ALF owners, housing programs are people that just simply rent rooms. These are the people that you want to build the relationship with, y'all. Right here is this HRA business in a box, right? It's usually uh, $4,700. But for a long time, we had it for 1997. But right now, starting I think last Friday, there's a scholarship now for it. Um, I don't know what the exact instructions are, but if you type to my team, um, HRA scholarship, mm -hmm. we'll make sure that you only get this for 997. Okay, wow. that comes with the hey. virtual assistant, Shay. That's a free gift, actually. That's not even a part of the course. That's I like, give you the you VA, say? the standard operator procedures, and the training. The course, curriculum, and ebook. Guys, this is a no brainer. Come on, give away. Some of y'all got jobs and want to do this, but you don't have time. Right. But if you like Janine, who's got a full time job on multiple businesses, her VA does all of this stuff for her. The VA does the social media, meaning the reach out to the social workers and the case manager seven days a week. They do the phone calls, the cold calls. And the building of the relationships in your community and anybody else's community. The guy that I may be moving in today, I think it's coming from Janine. Janine, they told me you sent me one guy. He didn't want the private room because he couldn't afford it. I think you sent me another one, though. And if I'm wrong, Janine can tell me. But this other guy that I mean today, guys, I live in Florida. Janine lives in California. Say it again. Her virtual assistant lives in the Philippines. I'm and we're housing people. Please say that one more time so people Lord, can hear mercy. what you just said. I'm going to try to say it slowly, please. Shay. Janine lives in California, Shay. Lives where? In Cali. In fact, Janine, can you put into the chat California. what part of California you're from? I'm in Orlando, Florida. House of the Mountains. You know how many miles away that is? But her virtual assistant, who's also thousands of miles away in a different culture yep. and country, what you say is actually making all of this happen while Janine's at work. Joanne is another great example of this San Francisco Bay Area. That's where Janine is from, you guys. That's a long way. Can somebody really quickly, Miss Angela, can you do me a favor? Can you Google how long how San far, Francisco, how California, how far away that is from Orlando, Florida? Pick any destination. Pick Disney World for the Orlando thing and just pick anywhere in San Francisco for Janine. That's good. And I just want to show people how if you got a job that you're working from nine to five, if you got a husband, if you got three kids, if you are part of your church ministry, 
if you go to choir rehearsal, meaning you busy, but I always tell people, the devil is a liar. Who are you to say you busy when God put on your heart to house people? Guys, I'm real busy today too, but this is a part of my ministry. This is a part that also makes every other part of my life work because I'm doing ministry. Yep. I jokingly tell you guys all the time, when I was growing up, a part of my family was like, that boy going to be a preacher. Derek going to be a preacher. He going to preach the word of God. Oh, not really. I'm not a preacher behind a pulpit. I'm not a preacher that's on a stage, as some people call it, or behind a podium. I don't have my own church. You do have but, your own. but guess what I am, though? I am a minister of the gospel because we love God, we love people, and we love real estate. And God has allowed me to have a ministry that helps people through real estate. So, guys, you don't have to be a preacher with a microphone to say that you're a preacher or that you got a ministry. We're doing God's will by using real estate. Guys, you realize I house people every day that will be homeless on the street without me. Guys, I'm proud of that. I'm not somebody that brags a whole lot about nothing, but guys, I'm proud of the fact that every day that I wake up, I have an opportunity to house a 78-year-old lady that will be sleeping behind a dumpster because she don't know her little card that got only $800 on it that Derek can house her and Derek going to pay for the lights, the water, the cable, the Wi-Fi, and the security code. Guys, I'm a no-brainer to a social worker. I'm a no-brainer to a case manager. And that's what we're trying to turn you all into with this HRA. Because the HRA, they're going to view you the same way. No case manager is going to ever ask you, hey, Janine, hey, Janine, do you have the houses yourself? Janine, can you type into the chat? Has a social worker ever asked you, Janine, did you have the house? God, they don't care. They got a job to do. Remember, guys, I used to be the social worker. Guys, I had a job to do. My job was to house people in something that looked just like this. And as long as their income could afford it, yeah, it was either the shared room right here, the private room, or the private suite. Just like I told you guys, within this one model, there's three different choices. Shared, private, and private suite. Rose just said she's also in the San Francisco Bay Area. So, so Rose, wow. see how this makes sense, Rose? Wow. You didn't even know that. Janine is doing what I'm talking about today and doesn't have a house yet. Because we're speaking that thing in faith wow. that she will have one. Janine just told me, Michael just said, San Francisco to Orlando is 2,816 miles away. That is 41 mm. driving hours. Now, my math is correct because I ain't great at math. 24 and 24, that's almost that number. That almost takes two days driving, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. And that's driving straight with no brakes. Nobody does that. So I'm hearing it takes five days to drive from where I live at, Angela, to where Janine is. But the virtual assistant, guys, at only $5 an hour is actually who's doing all the Janine, work. Janine, you know you want to take that 41-hour drive. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Guys, I land my plane there, man. We're going to get ready to start shitting things down. I appreciate He's each and every one of you. Close, I God. thank y'all for coming because y'all had plenty of choices of where you could have been today, but you chose to be here with us and force the consultants. We appreciate that. I hope that that, that was something that I said that was ab able to change either your life or your family's life. Because every time before we go live, we pray. God, allow us to speak like the a pen of a ready writer. Allow us to be clear and understood and allow this information to change the lives of your people. And we also pray that you guys are able to move at the speed of instruction to do this stuff. Because yeah. remember, it didn't take me to come here today and say, hey, you should be doing this. Most of y'all, God put it on your heart already that you're supposed to be housing people, that this is supposed to be a part of your ministry. And for some of y'all, it's a part of your financial breakthrough. Ooh. God is just so genius how he involved the breakthrough with your finances tied to this ministry some y'all think it's only real estate the devil is a liar this is ministry guys the poor and needy will always be among you and i said it 30 minutes ago how great is it that god is so genius that he allowed social services and real estate to be put together and he put in this little black boy mind to not be stingy with it and to keep it from people 
so that each and every one of you can understand that you can go out and rent or lease a house. Don't have to buy it. Mm -hmm. God, I didn't buy my first house. I rented it. Then I built relationships with social workers and case managers. And if you're real smart, you take the coaching from Forston Consultants so that we can guide you one-on-one -on, -one on how this works. Yeah. We don't want you to do it alone, guys. You can do this in two ways, right? You can do it alone or you can do it with us. Guys, we've mastered the art of housing people and we've mastered the art of shared living. We now hold the patent and the registered trademark to independent living facility. If you guys go to the U.S. trademark and pattern and that, 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 that website, the, 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 the USPTO, PTO. and you look up the word independent living facility, guess who comes up? Jay and I. We own it, ladies and gentlemen. So who else would you want to learn this from? Again, really slowly, you guys can take people from homeless to hopeful and move them into housing that looks just like what you see on the screen and you don't need a license. You don't have to buy the property. And again, guys, you don't have to pretend to be a nurse either. I didn't ask any of y'all to go to med school. I didn't ask anybody to become a nurse. The only requirement for this is a love for God, a love for people. And if you love real estate, game over. Hey, what's going on, family? I super hope you guys are enjoying this information. But let's just say you want more one-on-one -on -one coaching just like what you're receiving now. You're actually looking for our ILF Mastery Blueprint. So that's our hand-holding one-on-one coaching where that's what most of the people that come to us, that's what they want. They don't want to just watch me on YouTube all the time, right? They want me in their back pocket for one-on-one -on -one coaching. And what's super powerful about it right now that there's a scholarship that's actually available that brings that down to only $7,500 a long ways from the normal price of the 15 grand. So even doing this live right now, if you guys text IMB below, my team can send you over some information. But nevertheless, definitely go over and see forcedconsultants.com and check us out there as well. Let's get back to the show. All right, Miss Shea, go ahead and give your salutations and bless the people real quick, and then we'll pray them out of here. You got it. So thank you, everybody, again for joining us. Um, for those of you that joined later in the in the room or the live, uh, it will be available to you on our lovely YouTube channel at Forced and Consultants. Go ahead, if you haven't already, like, subscribe, and click the notification bell and join us here every Monday and Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern time and every Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern, where we talk about all things housing, all things business. We're all about seeing our 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 family members, right? Those that you those of you that join our family, the ILF or Forced and Consultants family to grow, scale, and do something beyond your wildest dreams. Um, if you dream big, we're here to support you in bringing that big dream to fruition, right? No big, no dreams too big for our God to help you bring it to fruition. So um, again, we just want to say thank you for being a part of today's live. Follow us on all of our social media platforms. And if you haven't already, um, follow the Angela Denise Foundation. Go check out my new website. Uh, I just went and used Digital Flow Solutions. I did not have the team build my website. I did it myself. Thank you very much. Um, it was a DIY. <laughs> um, DIY. Why do I keep saying D-A-Y? That's day. Do it yourself. D-Y-I. However you want to say it. Anywho. Um, but I'm excited about that. So I will put that in the chat so you all can check it out. Follow us. Um, if you haven't and you're new to us, go ahead and text new to 407-326-0086 and get your free gift um, and get in our system so that we can give you updates on any other events that we have coming up or we're planning to do this year or this summer. Um, again, thank you for spending Saturday morning here with us. Have a great day, everybody. All right. Good stuff. So thank y'all so much again. We appreciate it. And then we'll see you guys on Monday at, uh, I think it's 6 p.m., right? So we'll see you guys back on Monday to talk about a lot of what we still spoke about today. But when you want to be the actual ILF operator, meaning you, you want to buy the place, lease it or rent it. Um, We'll see you guys Monday and I'll pray you guys out of here real quick. Father God, thank you so much for the seed that was sown today. Thank you for so much for, for the ability to give what you so graciously just given Shay and I. God, I just appreciate the opportunity to be able to pour into the lives of your people today. Father God, by your Holy Spirit, bring all of this information back to their remembrance and also allow them Father God, to move at the speed of instruction to get all of this done. Because God, we're not housing people because Derek said it's popular. We're housing people because the Bible says the poor and needed will always be among us. So God, we're doing your will through real estate. So today, God, I ask that you remove every barrier, 
and every hindrance from the lives of these people. And Father God, close every door that you don't want us to be involved in. But Father God, fling open wide every door that you want us to step into, which is greatness. Because God, if you are over it, it will succeed. So Father God, today, before these people ever get the keys to their first facility, we dedicate their programs to you now. Father God, we call you the CEO of that business. And God, we just thank you for allowing us and them to be the kind of the overseer over it. But God, you are the CEO of our life. You are the accountant of our soul and you are the bookkeeper of our hearts. And God, we thank you. We give you all glory, all honor, and all praise. And today, I speak life into their business. I speak life into the LLCs. I speak life into the nonprofits. That God, you allow the community, their city, and the world to know who they are. Because God, again, we're doing your will. And God, you said that we were made in your image and in your likeness. And God, if that's true, it is. It's hard to lose when you are on our side. So God, we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ever ask a thing according to the power that worketh in us amen amen, amen. If you guys believe that type in the word amen have a great and we'll see y'all monday as hey what's going on family i hope you guys are enjoying this information but just in case if you was wondering how could you get more one-on-one -on -one coaching just like this first of all you can ask just by typing it in the chat or you can visit forcedconsultants.com slash imb Again, the IMB stands for ILF Mastery Blueprint. So again, if you want one-on-one -on -one coaching, let us know. This is exactly what we do. And again, don't spend all your time in this room today without asking questions. As you see, we're giving out a lot of great information. So make sure you ask your questions just to make sure that you fully understand it. And then also don't forget, we give you guys a free strategy call. So we want you to watch our webinar. That's it. also at ForsterConsultants.com slash webinars, but also soak up a lot of this information that we're giving you guys on YouTube and then schedule a free strategy call so that we can get on the phone to talk about how fast can we get you started. Let's get back to the show.